Mayweather 15 fights, 16 fights. And so there's 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 kind of like a blueprint there, you know. Oscar De La Hoya has exposed Floyd Mayweather for mistreating young boxers. The claims made public by the former champion and current promoter paint a disturbing picture of the methods used in Mayweather's training camp. According to De La Hoya, Mayweather would frequently push young boxers to the brink of physical danger during sparring sessions, which were allegedly extremely brutal and cared for the fighters' health and safety with little thought. I don't care where his followers come from if they come from The fact is that Ryan's followers are selling this fight. And plus, don't you remember you fought YouTubers? Are you putting YouTubers down? You profited from them. I can't with you, dude. According to De La Hoya, Mayweather would frequently belittle and humiliate young boxers, undermining their confidence and self-esteem. He alleged that Mayweather's verbal tirades and intimidation tactics created a toxic environment that was detrimental to the fighter's mental health. The allegations have elicited strong reactions from the boxing world. Many have expressed shock and disappointment given Mayweather's status and influence in the sport, but this is not it. Oscar De La Hoya recently provided additional details about Floyd Mayweather's legal issues with federal authorities. De La Hoya openly criticized other promotional companies, including Mayweather Promotions. As part of his effort to gain the backing of the WBC champion, Floyd Mayweather unexpectedly showed up at a basketball game in May, reigniting doubts about the previously dismissed Dubai hostage rumors. These claims had been brushed off as malicious gossip, but now Oscar de la Hoya has brought the controversy back into the spotlight. Rather than letting it remain a thing of the past, he has decided to level fresh accusations and disclose new information. He casually invited Shakur Stevenson to discuss the possibility of arranging a fight with Golden Boy boxer William Zappa or signing with Golden Boy promotions. Oscar de la Hoya's recent comments subtly alluded to Floyd Mayweather, revealing new information previously unknown to the public. At the same time, Shakur showcased his prowess by decisively defeating Artem Heron with a unanimous decision, thus defending his World Boxing Council lightweight title. This victory marked Shakur's first title defense since his contentious win over Edwin De Los Santos, a match that had generated significant attention and anticipation regarding Shakur's performance. I believe absolutely there's an opportunity. Um, you know, it all depends on what I want to offer him. It all depends on what fighters you know, we have on our roster. It all depends on their vision. I Even though Shakur won, his defensive strategy and backfoot fighting elicited boos from the crowd. Following the fight, Shakur disclosed that he had injured his hand before stepping into the ring in the later rounds. Stevenson Keen, to secure a knockout, tried to create openings with his swift jab, but Ardan stayed focused on defense, enduring Shakur's attacks, and lasting until the final bell. As the match came to a close, some fans excited the stadium early at the event while Shakur was explaining that the booze was due to Aram's hesitation to engage. Stevenson made a surprising revelation. He had turned down a $15 million contract offer from top rank for five fights, expressing a strong desire to explore free agency. Instead, this decision caught the attention of De La Hoya, who extended an invitation to Stevenson. This happened shortly after William Zapp's triumph over Javan Cabrera, which improved Zapp's perfect record to 31 wins, with 27 of those victories coming by knockout. Zapp achieved his fourth straight knockout victory, reinforcing his case for a title match against fellow contender Shakur in a scenario where making a bold statement is vital. Rose rose to the occasion as the leading contender across all organizations. Making an act is critical, and Zipa did exactly that against Isaac Pitbull Cruz Cabrera. He displayed his ungainly fighting style, which caused the bout to end prematurely. Zipa is now aiming for the global championship after an outstanding victory. Shakur, let's talk. I'd love to make that call with you," De La Hoya stated, emphasizing the need to make a statement as a top contender across all organizations, which Zappa did effectively. Cabrera's unconventional style cost him a couple shots, but De La Hoya commended his tenacity. Shakur Shakur finds himself in a tough spot, grappling with the chance that a better offer may not come his way. He turned down a $3 million per fight proposal from top-ranked promoters, casting doubt on what they might offer him now. Unless Stevenson lands a deal in Saudi Arabia, 
it remains uncertain where he'll secure a profitable payout without changing his fighting style. I could really say something negative. I could really say something positive. Mm -hmm. But when it's all said and done, Oscar De La Hoya is not, he's not my promoter. He was one of, once an opponent of mine. And we all, we all approach situations in a different way. Rather Tank was to win or he was to be on the other side. When pitted against major attractions such as Javid Davis and Ryan Garcia, Stevenson has the potential to excel much like he did in the intense fight with Joey Gonzalez. On the other hand, a matchup with Devin Haney, known for his fan favorite style, brings a different challenge. Shakur previously rejected a 25% revenue share to fight Haney at 135, a choice that may have hurt his reputation and led to his being viewed as a lackluster fighter. This decision also earned him the nickname Shakur Twitter due to backlash against his outspoken comments. Oscar de la Hoya advised Shakur Stevenson to carefully consider joining Floyd Mayweather's promotional team, highlighting the critical nature of this decision. In a recent interview, De La Hoya stressed the pivotal role Stevenson's next career step will play in his future success. Oscar De La Hoya staunchly defends this setting as his perfect environment, claiming that no other entity can match the support we provide. Rumors swirl about other potential suitors vying for his attention, yet their fighters remain inactive while he continues to dodge federal agents stemming from the Dubai incident. De La Hoya's remarks point towards none other than Floyd Mayweather following Leonard Eller's exit. Jeff Mayweather emerged as the initial voice, raising issues about fighters in Mayweather promotions facing insufficient fight opportunities. Jeff Mayweather Floyd's uncle provided unique insights into LB's management of the strained relationship between Davis and Mayweather, speaking exclusively to the Mayweather channel. Jeff Mayweather delved into LRB's strategies for handling the tensions between Floyd and Davis. Floyd and Davis have long been at odds, but Floyd has always commended Davis for his professional accomplishments. Davis has been the target of Mayweather's taunts since splitting ways with his promotion, which has given rise to speculation that Floyd may be stuck in Dubai. Open rivalry has developed between the parties on social media. Well, I guess, I guess I'm surprised because nobody knew what was going on. But to be honest, I'm not really surprised. I mean, do you think Richard Schaefer would take on this role if he didn't really plan on elevating the promotion? Well, I mean, I think that, I mean, that's his job. So, yeah, he's not going to take it if he's not going to try to do anything with it. And he knows that, he knows Floyd's value. He knows Floyd's notoriety. So, basically, put himself... Jeff understood the predicament and was up against fully grasping the complexity of the situation. He highlighted the common expectation among friends to pick sides, contrasting it with LB's shrewd approach, which Jeff commended as savvy. In contrast, Leonard exhibited his acumen by refraining from choosing sides and maintaining a steadfast focus on his business goals. Still in a good position, and, um, and I don't think that it was any animosity between Floyd and, and Leonard. I just think that it was just time. Richard Schieffer is now pondering assuming LB's former role, originally from Switzerland, and starting his career in banking. Schieffer teamed up with Oscar de la Hoya and Golden Promotions from 2000 to 2016. Afterward, he delved into boxing promotions, launching Ringer Sports and Pelham, each with diverse results. Leonard Eller's recent move into a new position following his successful promotion of major pay-per-view matches along with Mayweather appeared to be a logical step forward, ensuring continued harmony with the former five-division champion. Nevertheless, his departure suggests underlying tensions possibly linked to the ongoing dispute between Floyd Mayweather and Durbin Davis. This development raises intriguing inquiries into the impact of this feud on Herb's decision to step down. Jeff Mayweather recently shed light on an internal discord that potentially fueled the rift between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Leonard Ellerby. According to Jeff, a growing number of young fighters at Mayweather Promotions have expressed worries about fewer chances to fight, blaming Elby's heightened attention on PBC for neglecting his primary duties. Jeff Mayweather voiced his apprehension regarding the growing reluctance among young fighters to enter competitions. He openly pondered the uncertain allocation of responsibility for this emerging trend. 
Mayweather thought that standing with Richard Schieffer would be advantageous despite his concerns. Interesting to see. To sign him or to make a fight? To 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 sign him. I, I would love to figure out a way to work with him. I think he's a very talented fighter. In response to Oscar De La Hoya's second statement regarding Shakur Stevenson, the invitation to become a member of Mayweather Promotions was sent by Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather was questioned about the top five fighters in the lightweight division, and he replied that as of right now, the two guys I believe are the biggest punchers at 135 lobes will probably be Tank Davis, but the most skilled fighter hands down will be Shukur Stevenson. Floyd Mayweather Drew draws parallels between Shukur Stevenson's finest and Pernell Whitaker's mastery. Whitaker, renowned for his technical prowess rather than knockout power-wielded skills that conquered the sports as Stevenson's contract nears its conclusion, we aim to join forces to boost his career and arrange the matches he craves during the discussion. Floyd addressed the controversial Dubai incident, which was triggered by a video in which Tank Davis accused him of plotting an assault. Floyd firmly denied the claims, while Dan clarified his stance and articulated his motives. Floyd recently said a lot of times they like to compare certain fighters, then I say certain things and they say, oh, he's hating. There's no difference from when I talked about the thing with Shukur Stevenson seems to have avoided Floyd Mayweather opting instead to join Oscar De La Hoya's Camp Golden Boys promoter recently reached out to Stevenson, inviting him to start gearing up for a potential match against the highly ranked William Zappa De La Hoya, expressed his confidence in Zappa stating he made a statement that's the bottom line when you're the number one contender in every organization, you have to make a statement like that. And that's exactly what he did Zappa undefeated with an impressive 31-0 record and 27 knockouts, to his name swiftly dispatched Giovanni Cabrera last Saturday, their bout culminated in the third round with a decisive body shot, headlining the DAZN main event at Ontario's Toyota Center in the aftermath of Zappa's latest triumph de La Hoya, is now eyeing a potential world title fight for him against either Shukur Stevenson or WBO lightweight champion Denise Barecci later this year. I strongly feel that, uh, that uh, you know, Shakur needs some good dancing. I think Shakur is in a similar situation where if we have the right opponents, we can build another Mayweather, but you need the right opponents. While De La Hoya leans towards viewing Baroni as a less daunting opponent, he remains open to negotiations with Stevenson, so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see to sign him or to make a fight to sign him. I would love to figure out a way to work with him. I think he's a very talented fighter. Stevenson's recent bout with Aaron Heron exposed certain weaknesses, suggesting challenges ahead, especially if he were to confront Sibba, famed for his unyielding assaults. His offensive repertoire is lacking since his amateur career remains a focal point of scrutiny despite his impeccable defensive prowess. Stevenson's strategy often relies on scoring with light punches echoing his amateur roots rather than evolving into a more aggressive style in the bout against Cabrera. Zappa initially eased into the fight, barely throwing punches through the first two rounds, yet by the third round he surged with a sudden torrent of blows that overwhelmed Kara leaving him unable to defend or retaliate effectively. Should Shakur face a fighter akin to Zappa, known for his relentless body assaults, it could pose a significant challenge, potentially limiting Shakur's agility and defensive prowess. De La Hoya said that his interest in setting up a fight between Shakur Stevenson and William Zappa Cabrera is very awkward, as we saw with Pitbull Cruz, where he took him the distance. I think this win for Zippo was excellent, and now we go for the world title. Shakur, give me a call. I would love to make a call with you on Thursday. Shakur, William Zapata. That's a bro. Yo, that's where the fight. is he? That's the fight we need. We're gonna keep hyping him up to fight these guys that he's stopping in three, four rounds because he's throwing volume and yeah. non-stop punching. These dudes ain't in the the shape that I be in, mm. like, come on, bro. Is that the one you want? Because I, I was a fan, that's the one I want to see. Somebody who will come forward, non-stop punches at you, all that. If Tank gonna go fight uh, Lemachenko, why can't I go fight the harder, maybe the harder fight, we, ain't gonna, we don't know, yeah. but maybe the harder fight. And his adventure as a free agent, he took part in a Zoom conference with Oscar De La Hoya of Golden Boy Promotions in the afternoon. I believe there's absolutely an opportunity to sign Stevenson de La Hoya told the boxing scene at the news conference, formally announcing the Golden Boys out against the 10 Mandalay Bay show.
undefeated junior middleweight Virgil Ortiz Jr. will take on WBC interim 154-pound champion Siri Bohacek. De La Hoya added, It all depends on what I want to offer Stevenson, it all depends on what fighters we have on our roster, it all depends on their vision. I promoted Floyd Mayweather for 16 fights, so there's a blueprint there. Stevenson needs opponents, and he needs the right names. William Zapp of Mexico, a golden boy boxer who shares similarities with Ortiz following the meeting with Stevenson de la Hoya posted on X, had a great meeting with Shakur Stevenson representatives. William Zappa will only fight him if Shakur is signed to golden boy boxing earlier in the day. De La Hoya said bluntly that you know the relationship didn't work out at the end but uh, obviously top rank did an amazing job but uh, yeah I'm gonna listen to him see what he has his to intention for Thursday's call with Stevenson was to sign him he's a great talent and I would love to work with him he's a great fighter Shakur needs some good dancing partners he reminds me of Mayweather I had every single opponent for Mayweather following their own 2007 clash which then stood as the most lucrative pay-per-view fight in history. He further added that we found them all, and Mayweather became Mayweather. Shakur is in a similar situation. If we have the right opponents, we can create a new Mayweather. Mayweather's emergence as a contender against De La Hoya and Eddie Hearn in the macroom for Stevenson's representation could set the stage for a significant rivalry. Richard Shear, newly at the helm of Mayweather promotions, remains silent on the matter. For now, Stevenson and Mayweather both excel in technical prowess and agile movements in the ring. Yet Mayweather has embraced the role of antagonist, flaunting wealth and arrogance, drawing a large audience eager to see his downfall. Stevenson now appears to be following a similar path on social media, amidst mounting criticism for consecutive lackluster performances that have seen fans walk out of arenas in frustration. And, and you know, a fighter like Shakur is kind of kind of in the middle, caught in the middle of a rock and a hard place because he's a tremendous, tremendous talent. But I he finds himself in dire need of a dynamic heavy hitter such as Zeppa to inject some much needed excitement into his fights. This necessity becomes even more pronounced with the lightweight champion Gerontay. Davis and Vassal Lomachenko are eyeing a potential title unification by year's end. De La Hoya said Stevenson's a tremendous talent, probably one of the best top three guys out there in the world, and he's still young, but I'm not sure what his market value is, and that's what's making it a little difficult. Lomachenko's upcoming trip to the United States aims to update on the Davis negotiations and confirm his stance on finalizing the deal. Meanwhile, Bob Arum's top rank, who previously promoted Stevenson, is actively pursuing various avenues for their newly crowned WBO lightweight champion, Denise Barani de la Hoya. He added, It doesn't help when Shakur tells the world, I don't fight for the people, I fight for me. Well, you got to fight for the fans. The and, and, you know, a fighter like Shakur is kind of kind of in the middle, caught in the middle of a rock and a hard place because he's a tremendous, tremendous talent. But fans I pay you. The fans buy the tickets. The fans boo the pay-per-views. I think Shakur is one of the best fighters out there. If it makes sense for us, then I'm sure we can work something out before their meeting. De La Hoya said he would advise Stevenson by saying, take a look at your career, the last three to four fights and put a realistic value on that. Don't overprice or underprice. Be really honest and ask, what am I really worth? Who do I really want to go with to advance my career in the right direction? He went on to add that he has a lot of thinking to do, not just signing with a promoter, but looking at the details of what team can really help you elevate to superstar status. He's a fighter who deserves to make a lot of money more than he's making now, but it starts with him and Shakur Stevenson's quest to silence critics, clamoring for a match with the spirited Mexican fighter Will A.A. The journey unfolds with intrigue. Could teaming up with Oscar de la Hoya be the key? The golden boy exudes optimism, confident that his team can elevate the Newark Southpaw to the heights of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Stevenson and Zappa each clinched victories on the same day, albeit in separate arenas, adding to the drama of their parallel paths. The lightweight champion clinched another victory, successfully defending his title against Arnold Haroon, while the Mexican contender impressed with a dominant win over Giovanni Cabrera, staying true to his signature style. What's next in store? Stevenson sees a unification clash with either Jun Davis or Vasyl Lomachenko as his next logical move. 
Meanwhile, Zap sets his sights on his maiden championship, with Shekhar Stevenson emerging as his prime target. De La Hoya has been dropping hints about possible matchups for quite some time. As Stevenson enjoys his status as a free agent, he has become a coveted figure, attracting attention from promoters even abroad, including Eddie Hearn from England and the ever-ambitious Golden Boy himself. The recent buzz surrounding the Zeppa fight has already sparked lively debates among fans. Now let's delve into what the Olympic gold medalist had to share. Oscar de la Hoya recently engaged in a candid conversation with Marcos Vaz of Fight Hub TV. He pressed for time due to upcoming obligations and was prompted by Vaz to share insights on Shakur Stevenson. I strongly feel that, odd, you know, Shakur needs some good dancing. I think Shakur is in a similar situation where if we have the right opponents, we can build another Mayweather, but you need the right opponents. Belos, noticing the lack of promotional backing for the WBC lightweight champion, asked whether De La Hoya had reached out about a potential bout with William Zappa. To everyone's surprise, the former world champion announced plans for a Zoom meeting with Stevenson and his team. Oscar De La Hoya strongly believed that Shukar Stevenson was at a similar stage in his career. To reach the Mayweather Jor level, he just needs the right opponent, yet it seems fans can still expect some surprising twists ahead. De La Hoya likely understands that Shukar Stevenson's popularity could wane following a loss to Zappos. Why then entertain the idea of signing Stevenson? Perhaps the Golden Void promoter envisions him as a potential steadfast champion should he triumph victory could enable Canron to pursue more matches against top contenders. Paving the way for a notable revival and the opportunity for greater earnings in the future. And unfortunately, top rank didn't have the right opponents for Shukur. I believe that's one of the reasons why you know the relationship didn't work out at the end, but obviously, Top Rank did an amazing job. But yeah, I'm going to listen to him and see what he has to say.